um, the Dasha system. I was wondering what they are and how they work and what does it mean when they say you're going through your whatever Dasha? Well, Dasha, you'll find that word used everywhere. It's not just an astrology word. Dasha means like a segment or, or era phase. Kind of implies like sequential phases. So think of the birth chart as a two-dimensional description of the karma. And then when you add dashas, it's trying to put that two-dimensional picture into three dimensions, the third dimension being time. And there's various, you know, dasha is not the only approach to trying to get that fourth dimension. No, there's transits. Right? And then there's also progressions, ingresses. There's various ways of trying to figure out when are things going to happen. With the birth chart, you figure out what's going to happen, but you don't really figure out when. Dashas are not exclusively Vedic. They're all over the place, all over all the classical astrology, Hellenistic, certainly Persian astrology. So there's, Dash is not the only way of trying to figure out the timing. There's at least three other ways. And then also there's not just one Dasha. There's not just one Dasha system. There's many approaches to trying to, to do Dashas. There's one whole class of them is, are called the nakshatra dashas, the, naksh, the dashas that are based on the nakshatras. Then there's other dashas that are based on rashi, and there's other dashas that are based on degrees of things that are to entirely different approaches to trying to give a schedule. And basically, what they all have in common is that they're going to schedule the prominence of a planet. So all the schedules will read in terms of saying, this is your Saturn period. And then this is your Mercury period. And then this is your K2 period. Or they'll all read in terms of saying, this is the Jupiter section of your Saturn period. Right? So they'll take, take a major chunk of time and then subdivide it. And then, and then subdivide the subdivisions into smaller and smaller chunks of time. So you look at somebody say, well, you're in the um, Venus section of your Jupiter section of your Saturn Dasha. And that, that whole category of nakshatra dashas, they're all basically the same, but they differ in, in two ways. They differ in which planets correspond to which nakshatras. They're saying, you know, Pusha has some correspondence to Saturn and Rohini has some correspondence to the moon and so on. They could correspond each nakshatra to a planet. But each one of the various nakshatra dashas does, has a different correlation. You check out where the, what nakshatra the moon is in, and whatever planet correlates to that nakshatra is your first dasha when you were born. So since you were born when your moon was in Rohini, the moon was the prominent planet when you were born. Or since you were born when the moon was in Pusha, Saturn was the prominent planet when you were born. And then, the, and then it has a sequence. So the next nakshatra's planet will be your next dasha, and the nakshatra after that will be the nakshatra, the dasha after that. So right, if you're born with the moon in Rohini, and you'll be born in the moon's dasha, right, the next dasha will be Mars, because the next nakshatra after Rohini has Mars associated with it. Your next will be Rahu, because the next nakshatra, the second nakshatra from Rohini is associated to Rahu. Your third dasha will be Jupiter because the third nakshatra from Rohini is Jupiter associated with Jupiter. But another dasha system like Ashtotri will say, no, Rohini doesn't belong to the moon, it belongs to something else. And the next nakshatra after Rohini belongs to this other planet. So each, naksh each nakshatra dasha system has a different sequence of planets and a different correlation. What the logic is, is also confusing. What's the logic? Why is this planet associated to this nakshatra? Why is Saturn associated to Pusha? It's confusing. Why are the, are the dashas of a certain length? Is also confusing. And that's the other thing that's different for each type of nakshatra dasha. And that's they're named based on their length. Like Vimshotari means 120. Ashtotari means 108. So you get a, the Vimshotri system is based on a 120 year unit. And then each planet has a ratio of that 120 years. And why the, each planet has that ratio, we don't know. 
it's not no it hasn't been explained some people think they've explained it but their explanations are pretty poor and then uh and then even more confusing is that in the Ashtotri system, they don't even have the same ratio. They'll have a different ratio. The planets will have it. The, the main unit for Ashtotri will be 108 years. But they'll have different, each planet will have a certain ratio of that 108 years, but it's different than the ratio that they have in the Vimshotri system. So it's very confusing how these systems were developed. We just have the, we don't have, nobody told us, nobody left a record of why they developed these systems. They just left a record of how to calculate the system. What the dashas are more like is this is this is these are the main issues that come to the fore in your life during this era of your life. It's not really talking about specific events. Sure, you're likely to get married in a dasha that has something to do with marriage. Inside a dasha that has something to do with marriage, you also have a transit that activates the planets that are related to marriage in your chart. And then you can make a prediction that, okay, you're probably going to get married on this day, or if not, then the next transit where something like that happens within the same dasha. So all that the dasha gives you is a table of planets, when the planet will be prominent. How do you use that information? Well, you go back to the chart. Like if I'm going into my Saturn dasha, and if somebody else is going into their Saturn dasha, it's not expected that the same things are going to happen to me and that other person. Because Saturn is different in my chart. Saturn is different for me than it is for that other person. So the theory is, if you're in a Saturn dasha, look at your Saturn and your birth chart. And the things that Saturn represents in your birth chart are going to be the themes that are active during Saturn's dasha. Right? It's pretty simple. That part's actually pretty simple. There's a billion other techniques that are less simple. But this one is pretty simple. And then what then because every dasha has subsegments in it, so let's say you're inside a Mercury section of Saturn. Well then you look at what does Mercury have to what is Mercury all about in my chart? And what is Saturn all about in my chart? And how do these two themes either resonate or, or conflict with each other? Now I can get an interpretation for what my Saturn-Mercury subdasha should be like. Let's say if Saturn in my chart is about children and Mercury in my chart has something to do with children, and they're both positive about children, then in this dasha, maybe some, it's a really ripe time for some good things to happen relating to children. And then you can go to the third level and you can get all the three planets instead of just two. Most of the time in life, nothing special happens, right? Because most things, most days are just ordinary days. Because most of the times you don't get a real lineup of, of dashas that are, have something really important in common or in direct conflict. But every once in a while, you get a lineup of the five planets. You know, if you go down into your five, five levels down into your dashas, you get five sub dashas and they all are saying you win the lotto then that's, the, that's when you win the lotto. So, but it's, it's a little bit rare to have all of your planets agreeing about what they want, what they represent. But that's why most of the times in life you just get like these ordinary days. Because once in a while you get a day where something important happens. That's the simplest way to do dashas. Another, another uh, thing to do that's useful with dashas is if you have a Saturn dasha and a Mercury sub dasha, look at the relationship in the chart between Saturn and Mercury. So if Mercury is in house six related to Saturn, then it, the interpretation seems like, uh, oh, it's going to be problems. So maybe there's problems with money because Saturn indicates poverty and Mercury is about money. And sixth house is about debt. That's, that's, you can come up with stuff like that. And then there's tons of other systems too, but I like to use simpler systems because astrology becomes complicated so quickly because of the number of things that you have to do. So if each one of the things that you have to do is simple, then there's hope that you can do it. But if each one of the things that you have to do is already complex, then forget about it. You're just going to get lost grasping at straws. So this question, Tony, I was asking 
I guess we just answered it. Because I asked, what are all the other Dasha systems and what are they used for those? No, we didn't really answer it. We didn't? No, no, actually that's not an answer. He says that Vimshotari system is the basic one that you can use for everybody. And then the other systems are the ones that you should use if a chart has a special combination of things. I can't remember off the top of my head some of the combinations, but for example, like if cancer is rising and Mars is in the seventh house, then you don't use the Vimshotri Dasha system. Use this other Dasha system. Now, Ernst Willem has, has his software, Kala, and there's an option in the settings that you won't just be... He won't just show you every single Dasha system that exists. He'll only show you the Dasha systems that have matched that chart. But that's really useful because otherwise you've got to memorize all these things and check it on every, everybody's chart. Yeah. 